It's a great time to be a fan of American sports cars. Never has there been this much all-around performance from the Detroit Big Three. Last year, Chevrolet gave the world the all-new phenomenal C7 Corvette Stingray and, quite possibly, the most racetrack-focused muscle car of all time, the Camaro Z28. Dodge has taken the horsepower wars to a new level with the introduction of the 707 horsepower Challenger Hellcat. And for those who want a bit more style and a few more cylinders, there still is the Sinister Viper. Meanwhile, Ford has a pair of hot hatchbacks that are redefining front wheel drive performance. But that's not the biggest news coming out of Dearborn. No, this year an automotive icon is being reborn. The Ford Mustang. Over the past 50 years, more than 9 million Mustangs have been sold, bought by customers primarily in North America. But this year that all changes, as the Mustang becomes a truly global car and will be offered in several markets around the world. Like Mustangs of the past few decades, the 2015 will be available in two body styles, a convertible and a hardtop. But unlike hardtops of the past, it is no longer a coupe, as Ford now refers to it as a fastback, thanks to its new sloping rear end. The new styling up front is hallmarked by one of three grills that coincides with which engine has been installed inside the 2015 Mustang. Longer, lower, wider and more modern, Ford's engineers still wanted the new model to be instantly recognizable as a Mustang and have given it some familiar styling cues like the three bar tail lamps with sequential turn signals. Ford claims this is the most premium interior they've ever put in a Mustang and I really can't argue with them. Everything in here feels of quality and nothing reminds me of an old Mustang's interior. There's a nice aluminum trim piece that runs across the dash and there's soft touch materials everywhere there should be including almost the entire door. But what I really like is this redesigned center console. It's a nice mixture between touchscreen and buttons and these functional toggle switches that control a lot of the performance parts of this car are pretty cool. In the back there is one more inch of rear leg room, but really it's still a spot just for children. The trunk measures in at 13.5 cubic feet and Ford claims it's a more usable shape so it's easier to get items in and out compared to the old Mustang. The new Mustang is available with three engines. The base engine is still the same 3.7 liter V6 and it makes 300 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. But the big news for 2015 is the addition of a direct injection turbocharged 2.3 liter four cylinder engine. Now it makes 310 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. But what would a Mustang be without a V8 option? Topping off the range is still a 5 liter Coyote V8 and for 2015 it's been slightly retuned and now makes 435 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. Regardless of which engine you pick, customers will be happy to know that they all come standard with a limited slip rear differential and they all operate on regular gas. No matter which engine is picked, a choice of 6-speed automatic or 6-speed manual transmission are available. And being a Mustang, there is a wide choice of rear end gears that range from 315 all the way up to 373. I'm driving a 50th anniversary Mustang GT, and even though this does have a little more power than the 2014 GT, it has gained a little bit of weight, so straight line acceleration is pretty similar to the old model. What has changed is the transmission. Ford has worked a lot on improving this transmission, and throws are shorter and they feel more precise than in the old car. Best of all, they've moved it a little closer to the driver and the cup holders further away, so if you have a coffee or a soft drink, you don't have to worry about it getting in the way of you changing gears. The big news for 2015 though has to do with the rear end. Finally gone is the solid rear axle replaced by an independent rear suspension. 
But not stopping there, Ford has reworked the entire suspension geometry and tried to add some refinement to the Mustang. And you know what? It works. For a while now, the old stereotype that a Mustang can't handle hasn't been true. But now it's just ridiculous to think this car can't hold its own on a racetrack. The steering is so precise and at all times you know what the car is going to do. The refinement baked into this car is unbelievable, especially for Mustangs 10-15 years ago. To call this a pony car or a muscle car is almost an insult, as this is such a great sports car. Part of the reason for this handling improvement has to do with a wider rear track and a lighter front subframe. As well, the springs and shocks are stiffer and lighter than in the old model. And the GT weighs about 3,700 pounds. That's a 200 pound increase over the V6 and four cylinder models. Compared to a lot of its competitors, it's lighter or right on par. Like a lot of modern sports cars, there are selectable drive modes in the new Mustang GT. That includes adjusting things like your steering, your throttle mapping, as well as the stability and traction control. And if that's not enough performance, the V8 and the four cylinder Mustang are available with the performance package. In the GT, that's on top of the track apps, which come standard in all the models. And that includes line lock, which lets you lock up the front brakes to um, add some heat to the rear tires. As well within the track apps, there's launch control for getting the optimal drag strip launch and a whole host of track timers for acceleration, braking, cornering, you name it, it's in there. Short of making this a front wheel drive hybrid, there isn't much Ford could have done to keep the Mustang faithful away from the 2015 model. But the company wasn't happy with just making another Mustang. They wanted the new GT to be better than the old Boss 302 and I think they've succeeded. Still with a better power to weight ratio than the Camaro SS or Challenger RT, the new Mustang gets it done in a straight line. But it's the advancements in refinement, interior materials and especially the handling that sets this new car apart from other muscle cars. Add in the new EcoBoost engine and Ford should open up the Mustang to a whole new market segment. Yes, it's a good day for American sports cars, but it's a great day for fans of the Mustang.